Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers everything about the Binding of Isaac video game, all its expansions, all its future expansions, all its past expansions. I am Gary Butterfield, and I would like you to meet Willie Hughes. Hey there, Gary. Nice meat pun. Thank you. Nice meat pie. Hey, nice meat pie to you too, buddy. Thanks. Gary, um, uh, I want to get right into it because there's a lot to talk about today. We're getting there. Is it? This is the last one, right? Yes, until we get to like <laughs> yeah. midnight raw, snack in uh, three years. Yeah, raw liver and stuff. We, we got a ways. Um, Gary, we already did raw liver. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. Um, you yeah, fucking up, Butterfield. We're doing it. No, I'm just, I'm just, it, it seems like we would never be over the meal, meal time. I can't wait for speed week and range week, aka yeah. this week and next week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gary, what are we talking about today? Oh, rotten meat. Yeah. Can you, uh, can you tell me the effect of rotten meat? This, uh, this grants a full heart container. Nice. Uh, and the wiki doesn't specify who this time. Good. So. I think that's better. Yeah. Good job, wiki. Although I'm angry that it's not standardized. And it's also even I'm a little bit angry at uh at Edmund for making this not a meal. Yeah, Gary, is this the laziest, shittiest item in the entire Binding of Isaac? It's pretty. I mean, no. Okay, but, but it's but it's pretty down there. It's it's not. You know, it's not because it's not very good. It does no transfer. It, it doesn't have any yeah. cosmetic change. It's yeah. a. It's barely recognizable as rotten meat if you look at the actual item. Looks like just meat. It's you know, hardly it's, even meat. I think this really does suggest like a like a lamb pop, one of those lamb popsicles. I don't know. It looks like it's an arrow coming out of it. I know that's presumably like mm. a leg bone. But... Yeah. It does. It really needs some flies though. Because how does. am I supposed to believe this isn't delicious? And and well, I mean, it's got a greenish tint. But I see that strike two. Oh, so, like, yeah. I sorry, yeah. sorry, Gary. It looks like okay. So this thing. item is uh, offensive. Yeah, to it's people ableist. It, yeah. it is ableist. Yeah, I and mean, it's, yeah. Out, it's not a meal. It's not a meal. Like it, and yes, you don't it, you don't often just eat a gigantic chunk of chicken for a meal. But like this could have been called, you know. I mean, it's the obvious thing is brunch. Sure, because because you know they they didn't do a brunch. But yeah, this is this is a real bummer. It does though, for our purposes, introduce the entire concept of talking about rotten meat. Well, sure, and I I know I've been excited about that for yeah. months now. Yeah. How long has Today's it been since you've had, you've had some real rotten meat? Gary, I feel like I have maybe never had meat that is rotten. Does that make me a weirdo? Am I am I the asshole now? <laughs> it does make you a piece of shit. I, yeah. I, I don't know if it makes you an asshole. I just think that most people, like, you'll eat some meat that's kind of turned. You know? Okay. Like, I I may have had some slightly slimy ham recently. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I have ever had a piece of meat where I was like, that meat is rotten. Yeah, I, I think I don't think it's unusual for you not to wolf down on like a maggot infested ham hock. You know, I haven't yeah. done that. But like a slimy ham or like, you know, ooh, this is this is a little bit past sell by date, you know. And maybe you don't even know it at the you know, at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, Gary, what I can offer you, and this is a story that will actually affect your life. Hmm. I was at the plaid pantry enshrined in the various duck feed cannons. I, I love that plaid pantry. Uh, and I get a coffee drink and I go for uh, one of the non Starbucks ones because the Star- Starbucks ones ha- are both expensive and absolutely full of sugar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I get one of those little cold brew cans, take mm-hmm. it to uh, D&D because it's just down the road where my mm-hmm. friends Patrick and Lauren live. Crack that bad boy open. Uh, take a big old swig. It has somehow carbonated itself. Ooh. Uh, it has spoiled to the point the gas has built up and carbonated the beverage. That's incredible. It was deeply unpleasant. Yeah, that's really rough. I, and I wonder whose fault that is. Because my, my instinct is to blame Plaid Pantry because it's not, you know, they don't inspire a lot of confidence. Yeah, I, I don't recall but... checking. I think I can't remember checking the expiration date to see if it was expired mm-hmm. or not because it was so coffee. clearly expired. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, and it was just a clan of you know you wouldn't think you'd have to. Yeah, but I mean, it's got dairy in there, so yeah. which is clearly was the was the problem. Yeah, that's pretty fascinating. You know, when I, when I was younger, you used to always think like, why isn't there carbonated milk? You know. Yeah, I. Yeah, well, I can you, I can you, you say with personal yeah, and Gary, it was a nightmare. <laughs> I lived the dream. It was a carbonated milk nightmare. 
Um, I have a soda stream. I could, you know, if I ever wanted to get rid of it, I could do some experiments first. It's true. Yeah. Just really gum up those works. Man, I lived with that soda stream for like 10 months and never played with it. I, I gotta say, dude, it's awesome. I have, I, you know, my ex-girlfriend, the girl I was dating mm-hmm. who, uh, did, did me dirty, um, did turn me on to a really refreshing drink, which is, uh, soda stream, you know, water, like seltzer water with some bitters in it. Okay. Um, it's amazing. It's like super refreshing and good. And you, I bought a bunch of different flavors of bitters and it's like, this is my no calorie, you know, super, super light, refreshing water alternative when I don't want to just drink water. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little boy. And so I don't know, uh, how bitters taste. I vaguely know what they are, but I don't know what I'm really getting from a bitters beyond the name. They're not, uh, bitter. Like that well, is, fuck. That, 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 that's, well, that's the first fuck me twice on Sunday. <laughs> no, it's not fuck you. It's fuck John Bitters or whoever named him. Like they, they don't, <laughs> they don't taste like bitter. I think the, I think the, the main ones have a taste that's very similar to like Dr. Pepper. Okay. To me, like just like the Dr. Pepper kind of spice arrangement. But then I have, um, a cardamom one and a grapefruit one and they taste like their respective things. Plus okay. like a little bit of spice, like a little bit of like a seasonal medicinal kind of taste or seasoning medicinal kind of taste all right like just a tiny bit i mean that like sounds they, very appealing gary it's very good yeah some of the so, more common ingredients are cascarilla cassia gentian orange peel and cinchona bark that's a lot of really fun words in there too yeah that's and, and that are other than orange peel that like don't sound like they're in anything else yeah so i've unique. certainly never encountered cinchona i uh my most recent meat rotten meat thing and it was the worst kind of thing because it, it was, you know, on the border. Like, I didn't know if it was actually rotten or if I just got in my own head too much. Mm-hmm. But I made a, a pork roast um, upstairs and then I cut it into pieces, put it in my fridge and a bunch of re- roast vegetables and mm-hmm. just put them together and eat for eat like that for a week. I mean, that sounds um, like a real satisfying meal. Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's very nice and it's cheap. And, and it's what I like to do when my landlords are at home so I can cook um, upstairs. And the uh, I did it and like I got to the end of it and it was just like... I think it was partly it was just the end of the the pork roast, mm-hmm. you know, the pork shoulder. So it was all just like the gristliest, like kind of worse bits of it. Man, I love gristle. But I had like a bite that was just like not okay. Yeah. And it just made me, I was just like, oh, this is raw meat. I can't do it. Nope. You know, and had to, had to bail on, like not a whole, I didn't throw away tons of meat, but I threw away more meat than I would like. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe a fourth of this, uh, this roast. Yeah. It's real hard to finish a whole pork shoulder. Yeah. And and I get I'm very paranoid about food safety in a way that's probably more than I need to be. Yeah, I, I yeah. get very nervous when I'm cooking chicken specifically. Mm. Uh, like chicken, I find is very very. It's both easy to like just dry it the fuck out, mm-hmm. but also real easy to leave some pink in there, and then everybody yells at you. Yeah, and dry you know neither is good. Like perfectly cooked chicken is pretty difficult. Yeah. I was Ooh, Gary, on one of these shows, I, I think next episode I'll tell you. I think I've told you about it before, but the, the my favorite restaurant on the planet. But, oh, oh yeah. wait, no, this is the last meal week. Oh well, you never get to hear about it. You've told me about this as well already. I know, but you is in the audience. oh the audience is true. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. I'll, I'll hear about that again, and so will you next week on everything to Guppy. No, Gary, meal week is over. Next week's uh, wooden spoon. Do you not eat the oh, spoon with a spoon? I mean, come on. See, this is why you're the professor. I'm, I'm <laughs> fucking why Gilligan. More podcasting experience than you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what can people do if they like the show? Well, Gary, they can go over to iTunes and rate and review us, uh-huh. preferably with nice words and many stars. Yeah, and big words. Come on, bring your A game. Yeah, get cromulent on us. Yeah. Uh, they can also go over to patreoncom slash TV and donate. Mm-hmm. Give us that money. Yeah, give us, hey, give us a... Hey, baby, give us that money. Give us the money, Lebowski. Yeah, behave. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's coming up on maybe 10 years since I've watched The Big Lebowski. Me? Uh, oh, it's, I've, I thought you were going to say Austin Powers. Because <laughs> 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 I, was, I was trying to do a, a mashup. It's been, I've watched Big Lebowski more recently than that, but it's been more than 10 years since I've seen Austin Powers, and I'm due. I bet that first movie holds up. I I almost guarantee it does. The sexual politics probably almost certainly don't. Oh, sure. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not kosher, but I bet you there's funny jokes in it. Yeah. You know, I recall there's a character named a lot of vagina. Yep. I'm, I'm laughing already. Yep. Um, and there's I a bit he- where Tom Arnold thinks, uh, he's hearing Austin Powers shit. He also drinks some diarrhea and calls it nutty. Maybe it's not good. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I don't need to rewatch that. 
<laughs> watch Gremlins 2 or something instead. I recently re- watched Gremlins 2. Gremlins it's 2 good. still fantastic. Oh, it's yeah, it's un- it's unbelievably good. Let's let's save that for the second entry of Speed Week. <laughs> yeah, maybe. All right. Um all right, uh thanks everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I got the voice crack on that yep, one. Yep, it sure <laughs> did. <laughs>